thank you everyone for showing up. Um, I'm Seth. This is Mark. Hey, I'm Mark. Uh, we are here to talk about OSM power ups. Uh, what does that mean? Couldn't tell you. But it's a good title. Um, let's get started. So, OpenStreetMap exists as a snapshot. It's, a, it's perfect for representing or attempting to represent uh, the current state of the world. Uh, and so it's, it functions as like an ad hoc wiki. You can come in, you can edit what you want to, you can leave, you can sort of choose your own level of involvement uh, as you see fit. Um, and it works really great for doing that, for documenting the current state of the world. But what if you want to document the past? Or what if you want to document the future? Uh, <laughs> what if you're working with private data that has no business being on OpenStreetMap, um, and you have to balance like using different kinds of tools um, and trying to fit it into a workflow that you already use with OpenStreetMap? Um, and what if your team's workflow doesn't just, just doesn't fit with OpenStreetMap at all? What if you're doing things that just don't make a lot of sense for trying to fit into public OSM? Uh, we've got some ideas for you <laughs> if, if your use cases fit what I'm describing. Um, so super abilities, we're thinking about like what kinds of, what different kinds of mapping can you do? Uh, that goes beyond what you might do with public OSM. Uh, flexibility, ways of using OSM infrastructure um, outside of its current use. Uh, and insights, how do you better understand, if you're, if you're organizing a mapping team, how do you better understand what everyone is doing, what they're working on now, what they've done over the, the past months or years, and what they can do next? Uh, so, so we'll start with super abilities. Um, and really, really about like not what individuals can do, but what we can do better together as a team. Um, starting with Observe. Observe is a tool we've been working on, um, sort of off and on for since 2017. And it is an offline first editor for iOS and Android. Um, we have kept the the use cases for it that we're targeting pretty simple. Um, so you can add points of interest um, and I've tried to make that as, as easy as possible, just as few steps between you and adding a point as we can make it. Um, you can verify tags and edit existing tags. Um, and it's really useful for that. You can walk around and just sort of check that things are actually true. And there's, just uh, the simplest thing that we can possibly do to handle conflicts. Um, we, don't, we don't do a lot there, um, but you can basically say, yes, I want to overwrite this conflicting change, or I want to discard my change, because obviously I was not doing as good as this person did. Uh, whatever the reason is, that's the simplest amount of conflict handling that we can do. Um, observe is really useful for sort of casual or educational mapping parties, um, as well as just sort of documenting things in the field. Um, we wanted to have an application where setup time was as minimal as possible. So you can, the goal is download it, go outside, do some editing, you did it. Um, So on the roadmap for Observe, um, things I've described is basically all you can do. You can have offline maps, you can do editing offline, um, and it's then cross sync. It's cross-platform. Cross-platform, you can uh, submit your changes to the OSM API after you rejoin a network. Uh, so the things that are, we're looking at doing in the future is collecting photos, of the places that you're mapping, GPX tracks, creating and editing ways, which on a mobile device is an interesting problem. Um, 
making it easier to do custom presets, um, and improving that conflict handling, and observational data. Um, so to be able to say, uh, okay, I've been to this grocery store. It definitely has pizza in the deli right now. Somebody else can come back later and say, ah, you know what, there's no pizza in the deli. Uh, and from that, we can start to create observations over time of when does this grocery store have pizza in the deli? Uh, apply that to whatever like actually useful purpose you might have in mind. Um, okay, next. Did I miss anything on observe? I don't think I did. No. Um, no. Okay. Next, <coughs> next superpower we hope to offer is flexibility. And for this, uh, we'll mostly talk about um, OSM seed. OSM seed is Dockerized OSM. So the goal is to be able to take the core infrastructure of OpenStreetMap and be able to run it pretty quickly on whatever hosting you choose. It's, whoop, it uses Kubernetes to manage the cluster of services, and it's all uh, defined in a Helm chart. Uh, somebody else did this. I have no idea what those words are. Uh, <laughs> but from what I know, it seems like a good way to deploy things. Um, <laughs> so what we want to be able to do is spin up OSM seed uh, quickly and easily and be able to use that with any sort of application um, that already exists in the OSM ecosystem. If the applications that you use allow you to set like the API endpoint for OpenStreetMap, you should be able to point it at your OSM seed instance wherever it is hosted. Um, so that includes uh, to be able to use it with like Tasking Manager or Jossum or whatever tools you regularly use. And Mark okay. will give us more details about all of that. So uh, just because we didn't do this at the start, uh, who here considers themselves like a developer or technical and the opposite? So a pretty good split, I suppose, like non-technical, because like if, if, if you're reading Kubernetes and Helm, I suppose that's to the developers here that maybe understand what that means. But OSM Seed is pretty cool because it allows you to, if you're talking to your developers, run your own private OSM, run, uh, have private data, put any data sets you want, start from a blank state, um, or uh, even change the schema entirely, maybe because a public OSM schema doesn't, doesn't fit. If you want to add observational data, like Seth was saying, that's also something that you could do with OSM seed because we want to be building it in a very modular way. And that modularity means like, you will have the OSM API, but also any app in the ecosystem. If you want to add the task manager, if you want to add OSM cha, it is the same API. We're just bringing it in uh, and containerizing it, which just means that it can run on your computer, it can run on someone else's computer, the cloud, or um, you know, in any scenario you want. So if you have a mapping team, if you, want, if you have a very specific workflow, we're building this in a very flexible way. Uh, for example, this is a project called Palestine Open Maps that has used OSM seed to take old maps of 1948 Palestine and start vectorizing it with ID and using Tasking Manager to run mapathons. So this is a way of archiving their history where they can uh, go to towns from the 1948 uh, ma uh, British mandate maps because uh, they made extensive maps of the world and you can find all of that in, you know, because they were an empire or something. Uh, and they made extensive maps of the world down to what tree was, uh, uh, you know, 
what kind of tree was in this village. So they're vectorizing that and archiving all uh, and, and using our infrastructure to make this private OSM, but just stuck in 1948, if you'd like. Um, we did this project with the World Bank where we're tracking things over time. Uh, these are special economic zones. So you see their satellite imagery in 2012 and 2017, where uh, we made a version of the world in 2012, snapshotted it, saved it, and created a mechanism that we can open OSM at that point in time, if you want, and then uh, use Tasking Manager and use all the tools that we know to edit uh, that uh, that time point, that timestamp, if you want. And so we can go back and forth and start comparing over time. And because this is OSM software, uh, we can use the full power of the ecosystem. We start with a blank slate. We can use uh, new improvements in vector tiles, let's say, and bring that into uh, our uh, into OSM seed infrastructure. We don't need to use the exact infrastructure of OSM.org. We can make our own ecosystem, however, the you know or whatever the workflow uh, demands. So OSM seed is still growing. Uh, we have. Like I showed, a bunch of partners that are working with us, um, and you know, Tasking Manager is not a straight fit right now, but uh, we are working on integrating it. Uh, we talk to Teach OSM; they want to be built to use OSM Seed as a sort of sandbox for all their classrooms. So we want to be able to skin the API and add classroom functionalities make it uh, friendlier maybe than the openstreetmap.org uh, blank slate. We want to start adding statistics inside OSM seed, so uh, overpass and search with nominatum. And we can deploy that as like a, uh, as part of the plugin system that we're building for OSM seed. So those are two power-ups. That's uh, flexibility and new ways of mapping but maybe you want to look inwards, you want more insights, you want to see uh, how your mapping team is doing. So how well is my team doing and where should I map next? So for that, we teamed up with uh, Azavia and some other people in the OSM community, Seth Fitzsimmons, I saw him in the room at some point, he's in every project. Uh, <laughs> and we build scoreboard. So who here uh, knows the missing map stats? Yeah, so if you know the missing map stats, this is the evolution of missing map stats. This is, let's say, missing map stats V2. Uh, sorry, Red Cross. <laughs> <laughs> it's called scoreboard, we're really excited about it. Um, this is how it looks, you know, you can get stats at a glance. Uh, how much, how many roads you've mapped and buildings. This is fake data. I haven't mapped 42 million roads. <laughs> but um, you get this nice dashboard. You get badges. Uh, we straight ripped these out of missing maps. But you can make your own badges if you want. You can, uh, you know, add new rules for how you get badges and we want to integrate with geo badges with whatever you know uh, s uh, statistic that you can come up with for your mapping team uh, so you get these badges on your Knights profile page and then we can break down your edits by the, the waterways the buildings the the roads the points of interest uh, you know the, show the extent of your edits on a map and also the top hashtags that you've contributed to. Uh, these are campaign stats, right? So this is, we import the tasking manager um, statistics for your team, uh, so, sorry, we import the tasking manager projects for your team. And then as an admin on the platform, you can manage which campaigns you want teams to work on. But then we break out all the statistics that are happening for that particular campaign. So we can 
have a little leaderboard for that campaign, how many roads and points of interest uh, mappers have mapped in, in scoreboard, uh, in uh, OSM. And the cool thing is this works also with OSM seed, right? So if you have your private OSM and you have your scoreboard that's linked to that private OSM and you have observe that's linked to that private OSM, it's all about that team's uh, mapping and, and their statistics. So what's on the roadmap for scoreboard? Uh, we want to build statistics broken out by team. So maybe you have sub teams uh, for, your, for your larger mapping team and then breakout statistics for that team. We want insights for ma managers to see um, what, what would be a, uh, a good badge maybe to create. You know, or what would be a new badging level that that we want to create based on my current team? We want to integrate map roulette. Is Marta in here? Um, and uh, integrate validation. So maybe we were thinking in your dashboard, you would also see like the mistakes maybe that your team is making, and then bring that into a team's dashboard. So. How do I manage my teams? I don't know if you saw this, but today or well last night we uh, created OSM Teams. It's a new app uh, that that you can go to mapping.team. You can actually check out the private beta. I am also talking about this at a lightning talk in 30 minutes. <laughs> so uh, come check that out why we made this. So you can add members of your team and then this is a, an API that can potentially hook into all the apps in the ecosystem. Problem with some apps is that, you know, they're all siloed and the OSM API should, should have social features, but it doesn't, unfortunately. So we built this open source API so that you can create teams, you can uh, manage your team members, and then you'll see that in OSM Cha, in Tasking Manager, in MapRoulette, etc. On the roadmap, right now, if you go to mapping.team, all the teams are public and open. You can join any team. Uh, but we want better search uh, and discoverability of team, maybe uh, searching by hashtags, etc. And then we want to build those integrations with OSM Cha and MapRoulette, etc. So that was, uh, I guess, what we have till now. I know it's a lot of content. Uh, we talked about new ways of mapping, about this flexible schema, private, public data. Uh, and if you have a team, how to get more insights into how, how you want to map. Now, I do want to maybe talk to OSM US about potentially bringing things like scoreboard and mapping team under uh, OSM US so that we all have a hosted version of like stats for all of at least the US mappers. But that's another conversation. Right now, we're talking about software and we're talking about all of this is open source. OSM seed, observe, scoreboard, and OSM teams. And if you missed something that I said or that something that Seth said, you can go to osmpowerups.com. Uh, there's going to be a link to each of these, and you can actually check out all, all of the work that Development Seed has been doing. That's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions for Seth or I, uh, that's all. Uh, would you like me to say what the technical architecture is? It is the Ruby on Rails port. We containerized it using Docker, and uh, it and uh, we we then create this deployment infrastructure using Kubernetes 
so that we containerize all the apps in the ecosystem and then we can put them into a single uh, deployment. And then we can modify that deployment depending on the workflow that that mapping team wants to. So the workflow for the World Bank and the workflow for the Red Cross are different. So we can kind of uh, do different types of deployment schemas. Uh, so yeah, so for the stats, uh, we worked with Azavia and uh, built Osmesa. Uh, if you, Osmesa is a separate piece of software that generates all these stats, and then we consume them in Scoreboard, and it just reads um, uh, a format of the Planet Dump. So if the Planet Dump has the IDs, it goes off of there. And then there are different types of stats that you can generate. And then uh, Scoreboard is an API, of course. You don't need to have the same UI. It has an API that can just consume those stats. I got a request from a professor who wanted to deploy this past Tuesday. A relatively professional user. I could just go on and get things done. Yeah, so if you go to Power Ups, there should be all the links for like OSM Seed, for example. And uh, that should get you started. Now, uh, caveat, you know, we worked, uh, like, I work on Scoreboard, and uh, Seth works on Observe. The OSM seed team is not here. They'll be at Heidel Heidelberg. So if you want to talk to them, and, you know, you're at Heidelberg, you can talk to them there. Or you can just uh, ping them on GitHub. We're pretty responsive. Question for you. Go ahead. Your scoreboard. Yeah. Is it like missing maps where it's campaign driven, or is it any edit that I make may show up in my personal page, regardless if it's, if it's part of a campaign? Right. So any edit shows up in your dashboard, but those edits that are uh, specific to campaigns and hashtags are broken out on the campaign pages and in you know other charts. Can you aggregate out by team? Like if you make the team the API, can you then? Yeah, so so that will be uh, that's something on our roadmap that we want team statistics. We want to be able to create a li you know list of users and say, can we get these uh, the stats for these users only? So there are different ways that we can do this, but I'm sure it's possible to do those team statistics um, instead of breaking down by campaign, breaking down by teams. Uh, I think you were first. Yes. Um, with the observe tool, with the offline joint, it's actually the primary map. Um, can you talk a little bit how it handles those um, like divergences, those changes? Sure. Um, there's a screen that'll show like the upload status of a change, and in the current version, um, a change set is created for each feature that you edit. And so um, to some extent that makes it easier to like uh, separate out changes and submit them atomically. That's something we'll be looking at um, revising in future updates that I forgot to put on the list is how might we create um, change sets that go you know, across features. Um, so when you submit that, It'll show up in the update status view, and um, usually it'll just submit fine. Uh, if there's a conflict, it tries to tell you a little bit about what uh, what is different between the conflicting edits. Uh, and so you just, right now you just have the choice of overriding um, the previous edit um, or discarding your change. Uh, so, so it's pretty minimal right now. Um, and that's something we hope to work on. In the Observe app, how do you plan, oh, I know you had ways on your roadmap, how do you plan on implementing that? Because that's, that's a hard enough crack. <laughs> Wild magic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, that's an area where a lot of, like, uh, research and usability testing is, is the first phase. Uh, we haven't gotten into that yet, but that's where it'll start. Um, you had a question, sir? Oh, yeah. um, I was curious how the improvements to scoreboard uh, with relation to metrics and stuff like that, if that's going to be worked back into missing maps. 
Right. Uh, that's a conversation that uh, we want to have um, with missing maps. I think there's a long running thread that the infrastructure that is powering missing maps uh, could also, if we update missing maps to the new statistics and we ran a server for um, both, let's say, OSM US and missing maps or all of OpenStreetMap users, then we can deploy both scoreboard and um, and missing maps. They share the the same DNA. Uh, however, uh, it, it would be a conversation about updating the existing server uh, without disruption to missing maps operations. I'm just trying to go to your site, and it doesn't working. No. Which one? <laughs> Did you go OSM power ups? Oh. Dot, dot com. Dot com. Uh, Did I say dot org? I'm sorry. I think I tried to do that earlier too, and I was like, what happened? Um, hey, hey, we made it like an hour ago. It was the. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was like the cheapest link I could find. <laughs> just, just do a dot com. <laughs> Find OSM powerups.io. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, any, any more questions? I mean, you can always find us in the conference and talk to us about these things. Uh, we're, really, we're really excited about this stuff. Um, come to my talk as well. Uh, I should get ready for that. <laughs> I should make my talk. <laughs> and but, for anyone that uh, was curious about Observe, there will be a workshop on Sunday uh, where you can check it out and let us know what broke. <laughs> what works? Yes, what? that too. That, what works yeah. well and what doesn't. Yeah. So come to our talks. And uh, that's it. I Thank I have a oh, yeah. How, how private are the private keys? Is uh, a private or a public key? OK. Uh, so we don't have that feature yet. Okay. Uh, because we will be building private teams, and this is like a certain, you know, uh, there has to be some sort of like privacy policy that we will have to build. Um, we don't have that all uh, thought out yet, but if anyone's ever built something like this, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to pick your brain. When's your talk? My talk's in 30 minutes, I think. What time is it? It's right after them. Yeah, it's the lightning talks. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>